Hello, my name is David Peterson and welcome to TC Life Safety's Tech Tips. Tonight we're going to be talking about duct detectors. We're not going to get into how to install them, we're not going to get into how to apply them. We're going to talk about what makes the duct detectors tick. So, it's been my experience in the industry that these are the most hated and under misunderstood products on the market. And they're hated and misunderstood because they're very rarely installed correctly. Very rarely. They're prone to filling up with water. They false alarm all the time or they just don't work. Um, fire alarm guys don't like it because the mechanical guys install them and then they got to go and do the wiring. It's, it's a mess. So here's my advice on applications, on installations, placement, whether it's going to be an alarm or a supervisory device. My advice is follow the code. NFPA 72, NFPA 92A, and NFPA 90A are all there as guides that will show you how to install, apply, and set these up to report to the fire alarm, whether they're alarm or supervisory. It's all in the code. Tonight, we're going to talk about how they work. I'm going to talk about the theory behind how you get air out of a duct through the detector so that the smoke detector in the duct housing can detect the smoke. First thing you need to know is there's sampling tubes. Every duct detector has two tubes coming out the back of it. One is a sampling tube and one is an exhaust tube. The sampling tube is the portion of the detector that spreads across the duct and takes in the air so that the duct detector, smoke detector, can find, you know, see smoke when it happens. Um, this particular unit has a gas tube by Air Products. That's a slot that goes up one side of the, of the tube and you can place multiple tubes across if you have an extra wide duct. And most of you are probably used to seeing a tube like this steel tube basically a piece of three-quarter inch EMT with holes drilled along one edge of them and the holes or the slots depending upon what uh, tube you're using need to face into the airflow all right but that's not how the duct detector gets its airflow through the housing it's just most airflow in most ducts is not powerful enough to force the air through the housing. The air comes through and is created by the establishment of what we call the Venturi effect. Very similar to a breeze going over the top of a chimney, creates a negative pressure in the chimney and sucks the heat and the smoke out of the chimney. Or a paint spray gun connected to a uh, compressor. When you squeeze the trigger, it blows a blast of air across the, the end of a tube the other end of the tube is down inside the paint, sucks the paint up. That exhaust tube on the duct detector housing is open at the end so that as the air flows across the end of it, creates a negative pressure in the duct housing and naturally the air in the sampling tube is going to be drawn in through and across the smoke detector and that's how the detector works. No other way. That exhaust tube needs to be there. I can't tell you how many times I've seen installations where the sampling tube's in there, but the exhaust tube is just left off because it's so small and insignificant, people don't think it's necessary. It is the most important part of the duct detector. Because I've also seen duct detectors with garden hoses and the sampling tube at the end of the garden hose hung inside the duct. And that's expecting that to work too, but that's another story for another day. So once that airflow is created, now the duct detector becomes a viable working life safety piece of equipment. So how do we make sure that that airflow is happening? Well, NFPA tells us, it's in uh, NFPA 72, section 14, 4.3, uh, which is the chart that tells you uh, how all of the different uh, components of the fire alarm need to be tested. 
Section G, subsection 5, talks about the duct detector being not only tested for smoke, which you can do by spraying smoke at the, at the head, but it also talks about the differential pressure. The differential pressure being the negative pressure at the exhaust tube and the positive pressure coming in from the duct through the sampling tube. That needs to be measured and it needs to be recorded and it has to be within the parameters of the particular manufacturer of the duct detector. You'll find that in the installation instructions. For instance, these air products, duct detectors, like to see somewhere between 0 0.01 and 1.2 inches of water. That's the measurement. Um, that's very easily measured with a manometer. That's, uh, this one here is made by SDI. Very simple to apply. Duct detector. Comes with different size stoppers for different size applications. Plug it in, press the button, and wait for it to read the differential pressure that's happening between the two tubes. And as long as you're in thin that, let's say 0 0.01 and 1.2 inches of water, then you can be guaranteed that you have flow through the duct detector and that that portion of the system is operating. Give the smoke detector a little squirt with some test gas to make sure the detector is actually working. Take your manometer out, close up your duct detector, move on. That's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, if you want more application information, then please give us a call at TC Life Safety at the 800 number that's going across the bottom of the screen right now. And we'll be more than happy to help you out. Thank you and have a life safety day.